is Dan, and this is my wife Marlene. We live full time in this Airstream travel trailer with our three kids and our cat. Uh, our blog is mollymish.com, M A L I M I S H.com. So, how did you all get started with the with the mobile life? Did you ever expect to be where you're at right now with it, or has it just been a gradual progression? Yeah. It was really gradual. For us, you know, we, we met a lot of people in the last couple of years that, that had this epiphany. Decided one day they wanted nothing to do with a static life and, you know, set out a goal to kind of be free one day. But for us, it was more gradual. We started having kids, and when we had our first kid, we realized traveling by air was too expensive. And we still wanted to go take our kids to go see stuff. So we got a little travel trailer first, and then found that we liked it, so we went and got this one. <coughs> said, oh, we're going to take a four months trip and we're going to get this wanderlust out of our blood and let's just go for four months and then we'll be done. And then we yeah. went down to the Keys and back cross country and it just made our wanderlust worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we learned is that there is no cure for this disease. <laughs> the, only way, the only way to curb the symptoms is to keep traveling. So what, was this your first trailer or did you have an RV before this? until you went to this, or how, how did that go? We had, we started out with a um, little, like a modern teardrop, it's called the Tab. Um, it was like, I think it was made in Germany, and it got imported in through the Thor Corporation. And um, when we, we went to go see it, we liked it because it's, we wanted something that looked cool, you know, that, that wasn't just like a box, and. You know, and also we didn't want something big at first. So we went to go see one of those at the dealership and the dealership also happens to be the Airstream dealership. So as we're looking at these little things, out the corner of our eyes we kept seeing these Airstreams. But then we also see the price tag. So we said, okay, maybe later, maybe later. Our main goal was to kind of get something so we can go travel. In fact, the first place we went to was Tucson. We went there for about three weeks. Uh, in our first trip in that and that's kind of when we knew okay you know we want to do this more frequently we didn't know how frequent until yeah after our four month trip cross country and back and then we realized we want to do this all the time so how long did the uh, the tab last before you ended up going to the airstream less than a year yeah less than a year less than a year <laughs> yeah. yeah so when you moved up to this you really uh, got to appreciate the bigger spaces and really find like a home for yourself in, in an Airstream? Is it, was it this Airstream that you got after the year? Yeah, this is the one. We bought it in 2008 and this is a 2007 model. Um, we looked, we actually looked at smaller ones first. This is a 25 foot. We first looked at 19 footers. Because we thought, well, you know, we only had one kid at the time. So we thought, oh, it's gonna be plenty. Like we didn't, we didn't have any master plans about how big our family's gonna be, what we're gonna do. And again, at the time, we didn't think that we, we were full time either. So what ended up happening is that we found the biggest one that we could fit on the driveway of the house that we were living in at the time, which ended up being this one. And we're really glad that we got this because anything smaller would not have we not we, we would not have been able to go this far with it. With with your holding tanks, like if you fill everything up, you empty all your tanks. Mm -hmm. If you were to go out with your family of five, how long can you last? Uh, boondocking. Um, so when we go boondocking, um, a lot of places in BLM land and forest service places, you can look up or you can ask them at their office to see if they allow gray water dump at the site. If they do, then our time there gets extended up to about 10 days um, because our limit at that point is black tank. So with our family of five, we can go about 10 days with that. And we just have, we have jugs that we go shuttle fresh water back up. You know, every couple of days we'll go down and get 10, 15 gallons. Um, solar for we have solar for electricity. And you know, if the weather is overcast and cloudy and we can't get any solar, we have a generator that we can use. So with that, you know, we feel like that we have everything we need. Absolutely. We don't feel like that we're struggling at all. Once, once you get that cell service, you're able to work, and that's yeah. absolutely everything you need. Everything I need, right. It's like full hookups. <laughs> <laughs>
So you, you mentioned kids, and I I meet a lot of RVers, a lot of bloggers, a lot of travelers, and you're the first couple that I've seen that, that have uh, kids with you on the road. Um, how, how often do you get asked about having kids on the road, like people that are wanting to travel that have kids, do you get asked a lot, like kind of how it works, the ins and outs of it? Or is have you found yourself to kind of be a niche that not that many people are, are doing? I think it's different for us because people seek us out to ask us specifically about how to do it with kids. So from our perspective, it seems like everybody's traveling with kids, but of course that's not the case. It's a smaller percentage of people that are doing this with kids or want to do this with kids. But, you know, when somebody says, I want to do this, but, you know, I have kids, so no, I can't, or I got to wait for my kids to be older and grown up and out of the house and stuff like that. Then other people that follow us will say, oh, you should go check out this family. We should go read their blog. They do it with kids. They make it happen. We didn't travel much before kids. Yeah, we, so we, we weren't like the, the couple that road trip all the time by ourselves before we were married and before we had kids. You know, we had a pretty normal, we went to work, we went home, we party on the weekends with our friends. You know, we, that's the kind of life we had, that's the kind of life we wanted. But it was really the kids that kind of triggered this whole thing about wanting to take them out and go see things with them, you know. So, I don't, and I think that's maybe a little different than a lot of people. We didn't ever think about, oh, because you have kids, you can't do it. You, so, for, for you, it's like, now that we have kids, let's go show them the world. Yeah. Right. You didn't want them to stay in the <coughs> same town and play at the same playground. You want to just open their eyes and be comfortable in all types of situations, all types of people. And absolutely. Not be scared of change. I, I absolutely agree with that because people always ask me because... I, I really love this lifestyle. It's something I want to do for many, many years to come. And they're like, well, what about when you have kids? Um, what about their their education? And I think homeschooling and actually taking them around and have just having those kids have that reality from such a young age that they're free to do anything they want to do as long as they work for it and the amount of people that are out there, how many good people are out there. It's such a great education. Um, how How's the education for, for your kids? Are you homeschooling or are they old enough to be... Yeah, we're homeschooling. We were actually going to stop this lifestyle because we didn't know anything about homeschool. We said, well, when they're ready to go to school, we'll just stop and send them to public school. <coughs> and then it was like, we're not ready. We don't want them to go to regular school. You know, it'd be stupid of us to yeah. stop. So we looked into homeschool. And there was a charter school in our hometown of uh, Ventura that allowed a percentage of their kids to be homeschooled. And so. So that's a whole program they have. They have a whole program, and I have a teacher that I meet with every 20 days on Skype, and they provide oh, awesome. uh, material for the for the kids. It was just the oldest. Um, we started kinder, and now every year, at the end of the year, we talk about it. We talk about, are you still happy? Do you still want to homeschool? Do I still want to be a homeschool teacher? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work. And every year we talk about it and decide to keep going. There's definitely... There's a couple of kind of uphill battles that you have to fight with this lifestyle. There's definitely a stigma with people that live on the road, and there's a stigma with people that homeschool. And I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say that years ago, I kind of bought into the stigma, right? I kind of thought, oh, you know, homeschool kids are a little weird, or people that don't live in houses, like, what's that all about? You know, but I think it's more and more common these days. And once you have kids, and once you start raising your kids and then looking at options for school, what you realize is that when you look at different schools that people say are supposed to be good, what you realize is what they do is the good schools encourage parents to get really involved or they require parents to get really involved. And what I realized at some point is that nobody cares for your, for your kids more than yourself. There's no teacher out there that will care for your kids more than you, assuming that you care for your kids. <laughs> but if you do, right, you may not be the best teacher, but you probably will have the best intentions of anybody. So you, you said at the end of each year, you go back and ask yourselves, do I want to continue homeschooling? Do the kids want to continue homeschooling? With how you feel so far and how the kids have progressed and how they're they're going with it, do you think this is something that's going to be happening for years to come, or do you think this is something that is just you're still kind of going year by year to see how it goes? I don't see us stopping. I think 
the kids are comfortable with homeschooling and I'm comfortable, I don't see any roadblocks in our near future. Um, I don't, you know, who knows what the future has, you know, in store for us, but yeah. for homeschool wise, it's not a problem. I mean, for us, we don't know, we don't know if we can do this, you know, because at some point, things that we need to teach them isn't second nature to us anymore. Like, we have to go and study and learn about it before we can teach to them. But um, we have to play it just year by year, and we have to say, okay, do, what they get out of being homeschooled, does it still outweigh, you know, maybe the things that we're not expert, you know, educators on. You know, it's not just whether or not they can have, you know, the best grades and, you know, have the most, um, AP classes, and credits for college, and stuff like that. You know, for us, it's really more about just having to be a more well-rounded person and having real experiences rather than just learned experiences.